Liverpool are subject to interest from Saudi Arabia. How do we know this? Well, we've heard it as a rumour, but an interesting aspect of this that we should unpack are how Liverpool fans actually feel about Saudi Arabia, how Liverpool fans would feel about being owned by Saudi Arabia, and the overall implications of being owned by Saudi Arabia, what it does to the identity of your football club, what it does to the identity of your fans, if it even fundamentally changes anything at your club, and how many people would be happy, how many people would not be about that. There are obviously a lot of implications from this, and we're not even really sure that it's Liverpool that they're interested in, but by a process of elimination, we've kind of come to this conclusion, right? Man City, not available. Manchester United, subject to other bids and subject to other processes. Chelsea, recently bid. Maybe there's an exit strategy there. It's really just another high yield, high worth, Premier League club. And why? Well, one of the reasons is that I think they feel limited by what is going on at Newcastle at the moment because of these financial rules that are put in place. And if they were just buy a place at the table, which seems ready-made, which seems to already be, you know, set, maybe you're just buying a bigger share of the pull of where you go in the Premier League. It would be a weird time to buy, especially for Liverpool fans who feel like we are on the beginning of something else. That's what kind of messes me up a little bit about it. I think we could talk about core principles in a little while, but I really enjoy being a Liverpool fan and not spending the most cash in the Premier League. Obviously, they've spent a lot of money in their time. There is no hiding that, right? But the other aspect of that is they also haven't spent the most money. They also do have a different kind of pull. They seem to be making different deals to other people. They don't seem as subject to a lot of the scrutiny that a lot of these other big regimes seem to be subject to. And broadly, I'm grateful for having a manager like Arne Slot. I'm grateful for having someone like Michael Edwards. I'm grateful for the Richard Hughes types. I was grateful for Klopp. Would Klopp have even come to our club in the first place if that was the case? I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? It feels like the narrative would be different if Liverpool were owned by Saudi Arabia at one point and Jurgen Klopp was possibly the man fronting all of that up. Not only that, but of course, you know, as much as I would love a holiday in the Middle East and I'd love to be the face of a visit, insert oil rich nation here because boy does that seem lucrative i also just have to say there are times where i feel skeptical of some of those regimes because of the way they've treated some people who i might regard as journalists or people who shine lights on things or you know people who are maybe just doing their job and got thrown in prison or even possibly killed or even possibly just silenced in some way that kind of thing upsets me do i think that other people around the world don't do that do i think that you don't have to, and this is said in the best way, break a few eggs to make an omelette. But what I mean is that happens in the West as well as in the Middle East as well. That happens in Australia as well as in the Middle East as well. That certainly happens in Russia. I don't feel that press freedoms are all that good in Russia. It's an official white paper that I think I'm, I'm going to drop at some point. Press freedoms, not all that good in that part of the world. And Chelsea fans seemed happy. Just saying. Anyway, as, as ironic or as trite as I might be being right now, it would also chime very differently to the way that Liverpool's identity is. You know, a lot of people can make fun of this means more, all those kind of things. But the reason that it began to mean a little bit more for Liverpool and Klopp as an internal experience was that we felt like we were fighting against something. And even though Jurgen Klopp is now loving the Red Bull, even then, I want to believe there is something else to it. It's because of the science behind it all. I don't think Red Bull are killing that many journalists. Let me just have Red Bull killed any journalists. It'd be interesting if they didn't suppress this piece of information. An AI overview is not available for this search. The death of Austria's Red Bull media tsar. I'm going to have to do more research into this before I say anything else and possibly lie, but Red Bull is suspected linked to death? This is back in 2001. This is back in 2001. It's just a headline, and it is a very old BBC website. Suppose there are different aspects to every industry, right? I mean, I don't even know. How, do, how, how did John Henry make his money? I know it wasn't the Oakland A's. Trading corn and soybean futures. He was even hedging the prices. Guys. I'm 
many people do you have to kill in the soybean market to get ahead? Do you know what I mean? Anyway, I don't think John Romney's killed anyone. But what I am saying is, uh, at least the best of my knowledge, what I am saying is, we know that there are other people who have used their political sway and influence around the world to try to negatively impact some other people. Maybe that would impact my relationship with Liverpool. Maybe it would impact the way that I feel about my club. Maybe it already impacts the way that I feel about my club. If I feel negatively about FSG, which sometimes I might do, or maybe the ownership group, if, say, Trent Alexander-Arnold leaves and he becomes, in inverted commas, dead to me, imagine how I feel about people who'd actually died. Again, there is an element of irony in all of this, but you get my point. John Henry became the sole owner of the Florida Marlin. I really need to look into this guy a little more. How interested would people be out there if I was to start to do documentaries about uh, owners of football clubs in the Premier League? Starting to begin to doorstep some of these people possibly. Maybe I need to go to, anyway, the point is not that. The point is, how do you feel about the difference? I, some people say it's a difference in cultures, right? Some people say, oh, well, we're not as close to the Middle East as we are to America, so it's much more difficult to relate to an owner like that. I definitely say that I don't relate to the Cronkies very much. I've not recently been to dinner with anyone that looks like any of the Glazers. I don't know, I need to look up the Glazer fam. Leave it. The point is, right, that none of those people are like, you know, relatable characters. John Henry, he's got unknowable eyes. Do you know what I'm saying? Who else has known it? Uh, Premier League owners. List of Premier League owners. Steve Parrish. Steve Parrish. Let me see if Steve has knowable eyes. Steve Parrish. All right. Steve looks like the friendly guy from the barbecue that your dad knows who he plays squash with on a Thursday. Fairs, Steve. You look like a good guy. Stan Kroenke. Stan Kroenke. Stan. The moustache is not doing you any favours. Um, Bournemouth owner, V Sports. What well, also sounds like some sort of sex porn uh, and a sport based version of it. Will Foley, William Foley. A lot of American owners over here. Okay, William Foley actually looks just like a friendly Eamon Holmes. It's, it's actually disappointing. Um, the Freindkin group. Definitely not going to like the Everton owners. Their offices look nice. Again, not been to dinner with anyone who looks like they work in the Franken group either. Do you know what I mean? There's definitely someone who owns Game Changer 20 Limited. I just sometimes feel like the word limited at the end of a company name makes it sound like the company is a little limited. Game Changer owners. Again, doesn't look particularly knowable. A lot of use of Ed Sheeran, which makes me suspicious. Tom Werner looks like a nice guy, I'm just saying. And John Henry actually looks relatively nice. And I'll say this, the owners of Man City all have lovely smiles. The Glazer family, the smiles can look a little forced. Jim Radcliffe, he looks like he's running for the Green Party in your local area. Nottingham Forest. He looks like he'd be a good dinner. <laughs> Daniel Levy, Joe, family of Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis, businessman, yeah. See, again, how comfortable would I be with any of these people owning my football club? How much do we really know these people and how do we really just trick ourselves into thinking that we know a little bit more about some of these people? It's a real question. Like, you know, the people who own Birmingham City, wait, where are they? Birmingham City, Tom Wagner, Knighthood Capital Management, Tom Brady's one of the owners. I'm just saying, yes, these people might feel a little closer to maybe uh, figures we already know, and that's what makes us feel a little more comfortable. But those countries aren't doing anything all that different. Maybe it's because they're not. Maybe the government of America isn't coming to own. Maybe they aren't trying to have some sort of political sway. But the broad history of Liverpool would chime very deeply against any investment capital stuff. But it would also very chime, chime very deeply against any stuff from 
suppressing information being out there, all those kind of things, right? What I'm broadly saying is, yeah, I think we've probably got some weird weeks to come as certain members of the public try to justify having Saudi owners. Would it please Bill Shankly? Probably not. Would it please Bob Paisley? Probably not. Would it please Jurgen Klopp? Possibly not, considering what he feels like he's built in recent years. And would it please me? I don't, I not necessarily know. Especially as I built a job around it and I quite enjoy covering Liverpool and where they're at at the moment. But also to understand where the industry is going, where the business is going, and that actually I, there are a bunch of people who are probably just scared of foreigners and they just don't class Americans as foreigners in the same way. Do I want to become an instrument for political wrangling? No. Do I want to become an instrument for, oh, you know, we might make it a little bit more awkward for the Premier League. Do I want to become that fan base who have to kind of like justify and do that? Not necessarily. I mean, no, not at all is the answer. And I feel like some Man City fans sometimes might feel compromised in the same way as some Manchester United fans feel compromised, in the same way as some Chelsea fans felt compromised. Does it make them bad people? No. Do they care about their club? Yes. Sometimes they care in a way that maybe the owners don't understand? Certainly. Estimated combined net worth of Stan Kroenke, 16.9 billion. Estimated combined net worth of V-Sports, 17.9 billion. Look over your shoulder, Arsenal. Aston Villa are coming. Brentford, they're in the millions when it comes to their owner. How much, how much are Liverpool's owners worth? 9.8 billion. Man City, their claim in terms of, you know, their ownership group, 16.8 billion. 20.9 billion in terms of worth. And for Newcastle United, for PIF, a public investment fund, essentially state owned, we're talking taxes, we're talking, you know, all those kind of things. Not that you pay any taxes in that country. 620 billion with a B. Those are the same people who be coming for us. What are the implications of that? What are the implications of being owned by those people? Of course, it won't go through quickly, it won't be particularly easy. Will we want to become those people? I remember some people who felt very much like, you know, when, even when new owners came in, uh, you know, the original Americans at Liverpool, they felt like they were moving away from what Liverpool was to them, and they kind of moved away. But there are people, this is weekly part of their life. Whilst to you or me, I live in London, but I go to the games as regularly as I can. Whilst you or I, this is entertainment, and it's also something that's been in my family for a long time, but broadly, you know, we get treated as entertainment because that's my job. It might be easy to go, yeah, yeah, sell it. Like, we want to be competitive. What I would say is, and this is a big thing for me, I don't think that the entertainment of sport only comes from being the best at it or from having the most of the resource that exists within it. And if we can't tell our story to ourselves, as well as, you know, we should, and we can't understand why it's not the, always the be all and end all to be the very best of the best of the best, and why there are other pluses to being in sport. Just give your head a little wobble. Maybe we're not, maybe you are the problem and it's not Liverpool the problem. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think, would you be interested in being bought by the Piff Posse? Uh, you know, is R&B Sports Media, which sounds like a P. Diddy company, but isn't. Uh, it's actually owned by uh, David and Simon Rubin. I don't know who those people are. Uh, and I don't want to libel you, but... Broadly, your business sounds great. Uh, the brothers were born in Bombay, British India. British India. Presences and provinces of British. I have learned so much in this video. I didn't even know there was a place called British India because frankly, that sounds offensive. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, would you want to be joined and owned by the Saudis? We could at least give it a go.
But no, I'm happy with FSG at the moment. Uh, stick, don't twist. I think we're rolling a 20 or whatever it is in blackjack right now. And every now and again, dealer flips the cards, we get 21. Or the opposition bust with 115. Anyway, see you guys in a little while. Much love. Bye.